If you were inspired to make masks for the COVID-19 workers, I wanted to give you some things to consider and a how-to guide. The mask has some ability to filter virus and bacterial sized particles. I am an orthopedic surgeon and I will give you some of the scientific articles and information that led to these recommendations. And at the end, of course, a disclaimer. Supply list. I will give you a formal list at the end and you can download it from our website. You will need an HVAC filter, the kind you use for air conditioning vents. I recommend the MERV 12 to 14 or FPR 9 to 10 or 1500 MPR rated filter like the two that are shown. You will also need some cotton material. I recommend a light colored 100% cotton pillowcase like this one works well. You want to remove the filter material from its casing. Depending on the type, you can use scissors or wire cutters as needed. The wire edges can be really sharp, so be careful. The band-aid on my thumb is where I poked myself with the wire. You will need to cut your template. It will be seven and a quarter inches wide by seven and a half inches long. You can just print the template from our website if you like. The long narrow part at the bottom is for templating the edging and ties. I marked in for nose to keep the orientation straight before I fold the fabric and cut it. So I folded the fabric so it's double layer and now I'm gonna cut out the square. Now just cut the fold so you have two squares. You're going to flatten the filter out by putting weights on either side and holding it down, marking it with chalk, and then cutting out one square of the filter material. You will use the narrower template piece to mark out the ties. You need to cut two strips that are at least 37 inches long. I made my ties 43 inches. Sorry about the guinea pig squeaking in the background. I just folded the fabric in half and made two long strips and I'm cutting along the fold to separate out the two. Now we will cut two separate four inch side trim pieces. The dotted line on the template can be used to mark these. One of the reasons I like all cotton is that it irons well. We are going to iron pleats and the fold on the edging so it will be easier to sew. Don't iron the filter. We can make pleats in it without ironing. You want to adjust your pleats so that the side will measure four inches. If it's not perfect, you can adjust it with the iron as you can see. After you iron pleats in both square mask pieces, you will iron the trim and the tie pieces like this. There, stop. Now we will put the layers together. You have to make the filter have pleats in it so that it also matches the four inch side length and then once you have it like you want it you want to pin it to the pleated cotton layer with a cotton layer on either side of it. Now you have a piece of cotton on either side of the filter and we're going to pin these together on each side so that the pleats all lie flat. I first pin the two layers together and then when I put the other layer on top, I just pulled the pin out and pinned it over the three layers, as you can see. As you can see, I've done this on both sides so it's nice and flat. Now we're going to run a straight seam 
across each side of the mask to hold the layers together. Now remove the pins. Make sure and check for hidden pins because once you put the edging on you can't get them out. This is what I found here. Now is a great time to cut the threads. Take the two small side trim pieces that you ironed and we're going to put them together on the mask with pins. Once we have this pinned, then we're going to run a line of stitching uh, across the side of the mask. I like to use zigzag, but you could do it straight. Now do the other side and cut the edge off if it's a little bit of extra. Now you're ready to add the ties, which are also the trim for the top and the bottom. Find the middle of the tie and mark it with chalk, and you'll line that up with the middle of the mask. This is a twist tie. Now I have the long ties, and I'm folding them together like we did when we ironed them, and we're going to pin these to the top and bottom of the mask. This is where you have the option to add a twist tie, which gives the nose bridge some ability to be molded, and you pin it in when you put the edging over it. Now just remove your pins. And the last step is just to finish the ends. I just cut these off at an angle, but you can also hand stitch them so they don't fray. I do think you should make a tag that states what the mask is made of and specifically the type of filter you used. I would put a note with a short bit about you because it's nice to know when someone is cheering for you. The punched hole allows you to attach it to the tie. Here is the background on the rationale and scientific information that contributed to this design. The high quality filtering mask that you see in the news is the N95 mask. It filters out 95% of particles. It typically feels a bit like stiff paper. For the N95 mask to work, it really has to fit snugly without leaks. It takes more pressure to push the air through the mask. These masks are reserved for very high-risk hospital activities, like working on a COVID-19 patient's airway. The rest of hospital work is relegated to regular disposable masks, the same type that we wear in the operating room. These are not designed to filter out viruses or bacteria. They're really just designed to keep spit and respiratory droplets from landing on the patient or the instruments, and to be a general barrier to splashes on us. So, those of us who aspire to make a mask for the COVID-19 workers are not going to be able to make an N95 mask because even if we could get the materials, we cannot get it to fit people's faces. And when it does not fit, the air just goes in and out on the sides. With that in mind, the ideal mask for hospital workers has some small particle filtering ability, is comfortable, is washable, and fits a variety of shapes and sizes. HVAC filters have a material that fits this requirement. A MERV 14 grade air conditioning filter removes at least 75% of bacteria and virus sized particles. Additionally, we know that laundering with bleach or laundry detergent that has bleach in it will remove nearly 100% of pathogens, which would be an option that would allow reuse of the masks. We made two mask prototypes and we used two different brands of AC filter with the same grade of filtering. They both washed, dried, and sewed just fine. Here are a few technical points. One, I would not iron the AC filter, just the cotton material. Two, the wire on the AC filter can be sharp and can poke your skin. Three, a twist tie. 
I got one I used from a paper disposable mask that I had already run through the washer and dryer. It is possible that the dryer would melt a plastic twist tie, but it's a nice thing to add to the mask if you can. And the fourth tip, don't ever put a mask on someone who's having a hard time breathing. It just makes it harder for them to breathe. Five, I will post links to the template, measurements, materials list, and bibliog bibliography of references with the video. And one last point, I hope that the quilters and sewers of the world will take this as a starting point and make the mask design even better. I'm sure you realize that COVID-19 coronavirus testing has not been done on this mask or really many of the masks. These are extraordinary times and they call for creative solutions. We can use scientific articles and knowledge to inform these solutions. There is no guarantee that this mask will protect you or a loved one or a hospital worker from the coronavirus. Remember, most transmission is via hands, touching, and surfaces, which is why hand washing is the number one preventative measure. This video was made entirely to help people around the world with the enormous challenge presented by a pandemic. This video was not funded and is not intended for sponsorship or commercialization. This is intended for home volunteers that simply want to do something to help.